Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Enigmatica 2 Expert. So last episode, of course, we got the Brine Tower set up, and we started running for Brine, and I decided, I was sitting here thinking, and it's like, we've got to get the laser drills set up, you know, at least one of them uh, in place. And to do that, I don't really want to set up a temporary setup. I'd rather just go ahead and put it where it's going to be, which is in the kind of the ore processing slash mining facility. To do that, we're really going to have to start speed building. Now, um, we're going to go ahead and jump into a bit of speed building, and then we're going to come back at the end and set up the laser drill. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump into a bit of speed building. Okay, so I decided on this area over here uh, for our mine and ore processing area. Um, it's going to be close to the brine towers, and I think it's going to look pretty good uh, once we start building out some of the, uh, you know, just the area kind of around here. I think it's going to look pretty good. Um, kind of being close to the tech building and kind of being a large structure that really stands out at a distance. Um, now, right now, you'll notice I'm cutting out, basically I drained a river and blocked it off. And I'm kind of cutting away, I'm using the builder to do this, and I'm cutting a large oval shape. Now eventually it won't be a perfect oval, um, but for right now this is just kind of for reference. And we're not actually going to be building in the part that I'm cutting away, but this is for reference for me, uh, kind of for building the actual structure. So we're just clearing all this with the builder, and I am keeping um, pretty much everything, the dirt and stuff, um, not cobblestone and all that junk, just dirt and then all the other materials uh, that we're collecting. I'm dumping the seeds though, but, um, and I'll show you later what all we got from there, though I did use all the dirt from it. I did use that because our build today is primarily consisting of dirt and dwarven blocks, as you'll see. Um, but anyways, we're going to start off building, um, with a bit of hardened stone and we will have a few cutaways like where it kind of, the screen goes blank for a second because I was popping around uh, this thing was very just material intensive, not expensive, uh, it just took a lot of materials, like thousands upon thousands of dirt and dwarven blocks. But we're going to start out by framing, as we have with most of our buildings though, this will be one of the first buildings that gets the full change. Uh, we're starting out with hardened stone, because that's kind of our cobblestone within this series, um, though it is going to be one of the primary building materials for a lot of our layouts, but some of the buildings that have hardened stone will get... Uh, change to different materials as we move forward uh, just as I get the materials and as I decide what materials I want things like that but this one I had a pretty clear idea of what I wanted uh, so it kind of worked out and originally we were actually going to be speed building today uh, the fluid building we didn't quite get that far because I got rolling on this and I had like such a good idea of what I wanted uh, to do with this that I just kept building and kept building until it was pretty well done minus you know a few little details here and there that we'll add um, later on and just little things that we'll kind of tweak and stuff but um, you can see the dwarven blocks starting to come together here um, I will say this is actually running at a pretty fast speed it's like 70 times speed uh, so all in all what you're watching here is about 15 or so hours of on-screen build time plus a lot of time setting up for it. The materials, they weren't that bad because I set up automation for the dirt that we're going to be using. The Dwarven Stone was easy to bulk craft out alchemical brass, and of course basalt, we have infinite of that, more or less. Um, at this point, I think I have still like 50 stacks of basalt essence. It goes like super far. So realistically, this wasn't an expensive build, uh, to say the least, but uh, it was more just time-consuming um, setting all this up uh, the most expensive part is that that I placed right there that is dwarven path lighting I use a lot of dwarven path lighting that part was a little bit of a grind but uh, beyond that it wasn't too bad so um, anyways you can see these there's eight towers in total and I tried to just do the best I could I mean this place is huge so I'm pretty much just focusing on a couple towers uh, and moving around um, as best I can so um, one thing I did forget to do, and I actually meant to do it for this build because I knew I was going to be moving around a lot. I actually meant to set up chunk loading around this. And I also meant to set up a rain shield, but I didn't even think about it, to be honest. And I was kind of in the zone um, and didn't think about it until I went to edit the footage. And I was like, oh man, 
I meant to do that, but uh, it's okay. It's whatever. Now, right here, you can see I'm starting to change some of the hardened stone out. Um, and this is where we're starting to use loamy dirt for this. This is loamy dirt bricks. Um, now, realistically, we wouldn't want dirt for these towers, but we're going to ignore the fact that it's dirt. Um, and I love the brown. Um, at first, I was looking at kind of a nether brick, but I didn't like that. It, you know, it had too much red in it. I um, mean, I think the loamy dirt was like the perfect balance for this tower, kind of having that dark uh, faded brown and then having that butted up against all this uh, kind of brass and gold that we've got going on uh, and these darker colors from the basalt because it's the dwarven blocks, you know, they have that basalt base to them. Um, <laughs> I apologize about all the cutting away. I'll try to remember to chunk load the next one. Um, but I kept having basically to pop over to the power building, the storage building, and occasionally the farms because I was getting dirt and dirt essence, taking it over to the power building to put into our automation, which I'll show you. It's just a, uh, a sequential fabricator. That's all it is. Just a sequential fabricator with some water crafting out loamy dirt. Um, luckily, we still had all that dirt left over from uh, when we cleaved that mountain down uh, to build the 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 magic building we still had a lot of dirt from that and then we've got dirt essence seeds after this because I mean I've pretty much tapped out on dirt more or less I've got a little bit of dirt essence left um, but after this we are probably here soon we're gonna be setting up all of our mystical agriculture um, farms I think because we're starting to get into some builds that are a little bit material intensive uh, and we're, we've been doing just a lot of speed building um, and having more materials is never a bad thing um, because when we build when we do a speed build on here it's like thousands and thousands of blocks so um, you can see I added a little bit of architecture craft this building what took so long is I would add like one small thing like adding those architecture craft blocks but I'd have to, I'd have to do it on multiple stories across eight towers uh, so I had to pop around a lot for this now right now I'm adding what's going to be walkways that bridge between these different towers um, because eventually this will be the only floor really that has a walkway and it kind of overlooks the the mine there um, but you'll be able to come up here and move between the towers um, and then once we build the ground level you'll be able to enter each tower from the ground also now right here we're going to start building uh, kind of smokestacks that come up uh, now at present I've got these as kind of short stacks Part of me likes them, part of me thinks maybe I could increase the height a bit uh, and maybe make them narrow out more, but I don't know. I kind of like the short stacks. Um, originally, my plan was to make them a little bit taller um, or a little bit, you know, kind of narrow out a bit more, but uh, I don't know. With these buildings, as big as they are, these towers, I mean, they're not huge, but uh, they're decent size, and I don't know. I just kind of like the short stacks on, uh, on the top of this, so uh, we will once I decide for sure if I want to stay with the short stack or if I want to bring it up uh, We will add a little bit more detail than what I add today. Uh, maybe some lighting and things like that right now uh, There is some detail on them, but they're not super detailed out at this point um, Though I don't really think they need to be super super detailed uh, For these towers, but I would like to add um, maybe some lighting and stuff and now you're going to notice I'm starting to place out some cobblestone up there and that's going to get changed over um, pretty much immediately to a dwarven block. Um, I was just kind of planning out where it was going to be and how big those rings running around uh, the towers or uh, running around the smokestacks, how big they would actually be. Um, and this building, of course, if you don't have cathedral, when we do the next world download, there will be... Uh, a whole lot of nothing. There'll just be a bunch of loamy dirt <laughs> setting around. So I feel like it's kind of important to mention that. Um, now right here I'm building out, I'm planning out in cobblestone, planning out uh, the way the center is going to be set up because what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be building a mining, I'm call, I've am i been calling it the mining egg <laughs> that, that sits in the center of all these towers and it's connected with uh, kind of theoretically piping uh, that kind of runs across. Um, now, right now, I did switch gears. You'll notice I'm adding some smoke kind of coming up out of the top and these kind of like vents. We'll take a closer look at them, uh, you know, at the end. But uh, I'm adding some vents and some smoke going on, and then we're going to start building the arches here uh, that's going to span between the different towers. Uh, 
but, and we're actually using three different arches, like three different setups because we have one that's shorter, we have one, uh, or we have two that's shorter, two that's longer, and the two or four that are angled, um, these walkways, so we're doing slightly different arches. Um, so just a heads up there. But yeah, in the center there's gonna be, like I said, I've been calling it the mining egg. And we're actually gonna set up the base of that. It's gonna be right there, that circular part. Um, and originally I wasn't planning on an egg shape, but I wanted a topper to it and I decided I wanted it symmetrical and it ended up being kind of like this egg shape. Um, and it's going to house our void miner from uh, environmental tech once we get to that. So that's basically the purpose of it. But uh, now we're gonna start building the walkways. These are, once again, these are just loamy dirt, dwarven blocks and a little bit of path lighting. Not nearly as expensive on lighting as the towers were, um, but the towers, I kind of wanted these vents and you'll notice I have some that are just like, they would be like air vents. Uh, so there's no glow coming out of those. And then I have ones that are glowing, which would be like maybe heat exhaust or something like that. Uh, now, once we get to the mining egg, we use some of the gaslight vents, which are the blue colored ones. Um, and that's because it just makes it a little bit more interesting and uh, kind of breaks away from just all the yellow, uh, all the yellow vents that we've got going on. This is where we start building out the mining egg. Um, but I, uh, I'm debating about if I want this kind of floating in the air um, or if I want it supported in the air. Um, I'm still kind of debating about that, which we'll tackle. We'll set up that, whatever I decide for sure um, we will. And if you guys have a preference, if, if you have a preference, what you think, if it should be floating like magically or if it should be supported on uh, kind of beams uh, that'll kind of come down and break away in different directions. Um, but we'll tackle that once we do the actual mine itself. So uh, now the piping, um, originally I planned a little bit something, something a little bit different, something more rounded or whatnot. Um, but I found that I just like the dwarven railings, uh, like what we had had for the pipes that run up the side of the towers. I think it just looks better uh, than doing like cylinders or something like that. Uh, now, right now we're opening up the towers so that we kind of have entrances into them. We may put a door, well, actually probably not because the doors don't line up very well with the pillars that we've got. Uh, but we may do a little bit more detail work there. I don't know. And I did run a little bit of steel cable uh, with structural uh, cable anchors from Immersive Engineering. So um, we did kind of the same thing over in the Magic Building, but we used hemp rope in that case because that was a little bit more of a natural build. We didn't want steel cables, but in this case we're using steel cables. Um, and these aren't supportive cables. These are like sending power over uh, to the building. So... And now we're going to start filling out the arches, which it does mean we cover up a few parts of the tower that we built out. Not a big deal. I don't mind the difference, uh, you know, what resources I could have saved um, because it's only um, covering up a few little spots. And uh, honestly, it was easier just to build out the towers in bulk there. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much the build. We'll take a closer look at it, though. Okay, this is what we're up to at the moment. Um, so, a ton of dirt. Most of this building is made of dirt. Um, an absolute ton of that, and then a lot of just dwarven blocks. Um, for That pretty much comprises the majority of this build. Uh, so, I wanted to go with something uh, that kind of uh, used those dwarven, those cathedral blocks. Um, and something that kind of had more of a... Kind of a high-tech, steampunky type feel. Uh, we still have a little bit to do on this. Not a ton, realistically. I tried to just go ahead. You know, originally I was wanting to actually build on this a little bit today. But then I got going on this and I was like, I want to get this at least close to done. Uh, now the bottom, this is actually going to be like right in here is going to be the ground level. So basically kind of where this hardened stone comes in. Um, this is going to be ground level and uh, it's going to come out and then... It'll kind of wind down to the mine. And this mine, of course, will go deeper. Um, I went ahead and dug a hole all the way down to bedrock. But uh, this is all going to get dropped. This is all just kind of uh, placeholders for me. Uh, for when I actually start working on the mine. Or on the kind of the strip mine itself. And, of course, we won't keep this perfect oval shape. We'll kind of have it come out um, a little bit in places. And break away from that oval shape. But just as a placeholder... 
uh, to kind of figure out exactly where we want to build or where we wanted to build the structure out. And this, I might change up, I don't know, I kind of like the egg shape being like perfectly symmetrical on the top and bottom. Um, I do kind of like that. I will say that the top is probably going to be getting something. That's why I haven't done much uh, detail work to the top because uh, I've got a couple ideas on things that we could put on top of that. Um, inside of here, of course, is going to be our environmental tech void miner, naturally. And on the bottom, I'm not sure. I've got to do some thinking. If I want to make this so that it's just like hovering, and if I do that, um, I actually considered putting a windmill on the front, and I actually did in my test world. Because as I've mentioned before, generally with my test worlds, they're constantly changing uh, as far as which test world I'm using because I just duplicate my worlds and then set that save as a creative world. Um, and I actually did that a couple times throughout this build. <laughs> as it progressed, I, I duplicated the world a couple times. Um, so I can go into the test world and kind of have things as they are and play around a little bit. Um, but in my test world, I actually have some windmills placed on this because um, I was playing around with the idea. Um, I wish there was vertical windmills, not just horizontal ones, because that would be kind of cool um, to kind of have this thing like maybe vertical windmill on the bottom or something like that would be kind of cool. Um, but since we can't really do that, I didn't like the horizontal ones, um, to be perfectly honest. And I did play around with, actually, I think I've, yeah, I've still got some round pillars here. I played around with the idea of having this be something a little bit more rounded, like pillars or something like that, uh, coming over as, you know, basically to be like pipes. Um, but I really, unless I get with chisel and go crazy with chisel uh, or chisel and bits, um, I think the, the railings actually work out the best, these dwarven railings. Um, and they all kind of blend in with everything else around here. So uh, it's kind of the piping system. So, um, And I've also kind of toyed around with the idea of having pipes around the top as well. Uh, because right now it does feel um, kind of awkward, I think, with the, the pipes going in at the bottom, but nothing on the top other than just the wires. But I don't know. I don't know. This this may get adjusted a little bit. We'll see. Um, on the bottom, you'll notice a couple pieces of cobblestone. When we do the mine, if we don't have this thing hovering, um, I plan to build supports that kind of come down and come off in kind of different directions here um, using probably steel scaffolding, honestly. Um, it's kind of what I'm thinking, but uh, I'm still not for sure on this. And then probably this will get a bit more detail. I'm debating between like a cutout... Um, on this wall or just some little detail work or maybe do a big banner uh, that kind of hangs around in places you know something done with chisel and bits but I'm not for sure I'm not for sure so this will probably see a little bit more detail work on it as well as probably some cables uh, kind of ran along the walls uh, transferring power over but uh, we got a pretty good dent on it nonetheless uh, the mine, of course, will be a separate build, and then probably anything else with this will probably just be something where it kind of sits. Um, we probably won't have another dedicated build to the upper section, I don't think. It'll just be the mine uh, and then this ground layer. And once we run this floor, I'm going to open up the rest of the, the bases of these towers. Right now, I just have these opened up because uh, that's what we're going to be using today. So, uh, but yeah, this, I mean, this is pretty much all done with cathedral and with dirt, <laughs> with loamy dirt. Uh, it's pretty much the entirety of this build. So, um, over here, I will show you, uh, my little dirt setup that I was using. If you notice, I kept popping over to the power building and sometimes over to the storage building, sometimes over the farms to get more dirt essence. Uh, but I do have a little setup here where I put in dirt into this crate and it goes into a sequential fabricator that's crafting with water. Um, which is pretty self-explanatory. We set one of these up last episode. But it's just producing loamy dirt for us. And we pretty much used all the dirt in our storage building. And then I was running on dirt essence. Um, we used thousands and thousands of dirt and basalt. Uh, of course to make the dwarven blocks. Uh, lots of alchemical brass. Um, I actually ended up just taking the cauldron out and doing that elsewhere so I didn't flux up my uh, building over here. I took it out 
and just crafted my al alchemical brass offsite in places where I didn't mind if it got fluxed out. Um, also, the the chimney stacks here, I'm kind of debating. Um, I probably will add some lights to these and some little detail kind of where the dirt is. But I've been debating if I want to bring these up higher or if I like the short stacks um, for these chimneys. And also, I was kind of debating if, like right over here, we have Twilight Forest smokers kind of buried underneath this. But I'm debating if I want to do Twilight Forest smokers up here as well. Uh, so we kind of have that movement effect. Or if I would rather have, um, you know, kind of like the vanilla style smoke where you just put blocks. It's really static looking, but at the same time you could see it off at a distance because the Twilight Smokers, once we back up just a little ways, you're not going to be able to see those. Uh, so realistically from the ground, you're not going to be able to see the smoke. Um, which makes me think I kind of want to do the vanilla style with just like you know, black wool, or we could probably have something better uh, for it on here. But uh, yeah, like I said, this is pretty much all just dwarven blocks. We've got dwarven path lighting, we've got loamy dirt, and then in a couple places there's some uh, factory block vents kind of tucked away just to add that little bit there. And of course we do have some that are hidden because I built them, but for me it was easier just to build them all out and then plan, uh, you know, kind of how far the arches were going to go down and stuff like that. Over here, um, this is actually all the contents that we accumulated uh, from mining this out with the builder. So I went ahead and just kept everything. I was voiding like cobblestone and stuff like that and seeds. I was dumping those out of the chest because I just don't need them. Um, lots of silty dirt, lots of clay, uh, which will prove useful because I'm going to need that clay before long uh, for another build that I have in mind. Uh, let's pop over. Honestly, it's not going to be enough clay for what I have in mind. Um, I'm sure we'll need a clay conia set up for that, but that's all right. Um, over here, I did get this stuff laid out. This is all really, really cheap at this point. Uh, laser focus matrices are just reactor frames, which we can replicate most of that, and then just need the atomic alloy. Single craft of those will get you all you need uh, for one laser drill. I have plans to have a bunch more, but for one... Uh, this is fine. And then everything else in here is pretty much straightforward. This would be, I think, the big gate to the laser drill. And we've already got that. Uh, and we can replicate it. So we're going to grab our laser drill. Just one of these for now. Um, and then we're going to get four laser bases. Once again, these are super cheap at this point uh, to craft out. And then over here, we have a white laser lens. And we're actually going to be automating our pink slime um, in one of the upcoming episodes, probably before I use it anymore, um, because I don't like having to actually farm that out. Uh, so let's grab that, and we got a quest complete, the laser base, and there's our laser drill. Actually, I did not notice that, because I didn't spend much time in these. I may have to add a block there, maybe just loamy dirt, just to kind of fill that in. Yeah, and this one here, you can kind of see the cobblestone. Yeah, I'll have to fix that. Um, but anyways, down here... What I was doing um, in the speed build is I was actually digging out holes down to bedrock. But these are dug out and these are basically this tower, that tower, that tower, and that tower. I already have them dug out. These other four towers, I may put something else in the base of them or I may do more laser drills. But this way we can pretty much have a laser drill of every colored lens uh, in the long run. Because why not? Why not? Um, let's go ahead and we're going to set up our laser drill here. And, ooh... Nope, I'm going to have to move these. That's not going to work. Because I built this out and then I ended up bringing... Because originally the front of this was going to be right here. And I brought it back by one. Because I liked that more. And I didn't think about the lasers. So I'm going to have to move all of these. Okay, there we go. So now we can set up our laser drill. Oh, you know what? I made a big derp here the laser drill i got this backwards the base goes in the middle the laser drill goes off to the side and then we need three more drills not not four bases we need one base and four drills whoops okay okay i got that straightened out um it's i, I haven't used the uh 
industrial foregoing ones nearly as much as the old and then we're gonna put that one in there and that one in there so yeah I'm gonna have to make some adjustments unless I only want two drills per tower which could work because then I would have enough towers and I wouldn't have to search for another use for my other four towers but also I could drop this down and have it come out a little bit uh, from the tower like if I drop it down like two layers or three and have it come underneath the ground here I don't know um, might adjust the placement slightly on these but let's go ahead and underneath here I'm gonna go ahead and just open these up a little bit and then underneath here we're gonna go ahead and put in well I can't have it directly underneath this so let me just clip off these corners And then what we'll do is we'll just run these energy conduits. Um, and then we're going to put in a flux point. This is going to be kind of a temporary placement for the time being. But we're just going to put it in right here. And we're going to go ahead and say, no, let me grab this. Go ahead and connect it to our network. So it's going to fire up this stuff. And you can see this is actually starting to run now. It doesn't do the beam like it used to. Okay, but once this hits 100%, we're going to get an ore. So we got Appetite Ore. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put in a white laser lens, though. Um, that's going to increase the chance. I guess this is... Oh, it is getting built up on energy. Let's say I may have to upgrade those conduits, but no, this seems okay. This thing's eating through some power, I bet. Wow, did it drain all... Wait a second, wait a second. Did it drain all the power in my system to run that for, like, no time? Ugh. Yeah, it did. Okay. Let me... Let me see. How's it treating our reactor? We're gonna have to upgrade power to run that. That's okay. Uh, these are still filled up at the moment but it would probably if it was draining anything first I think that's the pixie from over because there was a green pixie flying around me whenever I was building that, uh, that building so it is it is draining on this one a little bit um, but you could see as this thing runs it's running extremely slow at the moment now if we look at the Y level we have a minimum of zero max of 255 minimum of zero max of 255 man okay it's all any Y level, any biome, it doesn't matter. So right here, we can we can change the drill depth. So if we need to change the Y level, uh, we can do that here. But it's probably going to take us a little bit to get the dimensional shard ore. Now, if I recall, you can actually stack these white laser lenses. So I might... I'll probably wait till we do the automation for pink slime because I really don't want to farm up the pink slime for that. It's not terrible, uh, but it does take a minute. So probably what I'll do is maybe in the next episode we might do a quick setup it's going to be kind of the same setup as we did the last playthrough of enigmatica uh, for the pink slime because it's super easy and you pretty much have infinite pink slime at that point um, but we will probably stack more white laser lenses in here um, you know a total of six to increase that chance of getting uh, the dimensional shard ore and everything and then we're going to go ahead and just put an item conduit on here and say that you can extract and we're just going to pump it up into a crate for now let me change one thing in here let's say lens items we're gonna disable the upside uh, for the lens items because we don't want those to get extracted we just want the ores to get extracted um, now as far as processing down the dimensional shard ore what is the best way to do this crusher is going to give us two um, we can get dimensional shard dust and the enrichment chamber can change that to dimensional shard so if we find something uh, that does that that'll be okay crusher we can break it probably breaking it because fortune three is a minimum of two maximum of 16 so honestly unless we find something that really gives a lot of output that's going to be the best way to go i think we can triple it with industrial foregoing double double triple sag meal being 
the best option, but uh, mining it with our Fortune 3 pick would be the best route. Uh, so let's mine our very first Dimensional Shard or Oh god, it takes Enderium. <laughs> That's actually the next rank that we're at. Okay, so this is just about melted down. Then we're going to pour out our... Uh, we're going to be doing a sharpening kit because I don't want to change the speed for the Enderium one. Because uh, it is slower. There we go. And we got quest complete harvest level 10. Which from that we either get Ender Pearls or Platinum. Um, okay. Alright, so let's go ahead and apply this. And that's going to bump it up to Enderium mining level. So now we can harvest Dimensional Shard Ore with Fortune 3. And I think realistically at this point, um, that's Terra Steel, we could do that. That's Supremium, we could do that. Um, so we could bump it up to Harvest Level 12 pretty easily. And that might be something that I do kind of work on um, at some point. But thing is, like, this is the first thing that we've seen that's not, like, Harvest Level 7, you know. But we got two from that. Is that even, like, a thing? Yeah, minimum of two. Yeah, Fortune 3, it's a minimum of two. Um, okay. I wonder if I just got unlucky or if that's going to be... Well, we could try it again. <laughs> Oh, uh, we got three that time. Ugh, this is not great. It's not great at all. Uh, but you can see a number of other things popping into here uh, that we are getting. Because, of course, even with the white laser lenses, um, it's still, you know, it's not going to be 100%. We're going to get some other things uh, coming in from these. Now, to make the... Let's see. The infused diamond is eight for that. Great. And I need one per chemical infuser. This is honestly going to be the thing that slows us down as far as expanding out for this system, I think, right now. Because we're going to need a number of these. Because we're going to be making uh, sulfuric acid, we're going to be making hydrogen chloride, and we're going to be making sulfur trioxide. So yeah, come next episode, I don't know um, if we probably won't work on liquid next episode. If we're going to have a bit of a struggle ahead of us to get the uh, to get the chemical infuser. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. So we might actually, come next episode, we might break away for a little bit to work on power. Because I think it's time. <laughs> it feels like it might be time to work on power at this point. Before we start pushing into this. Because this thing's going to be a power hog. But apparently our laser drills are going to be power hogs as well. So um, might might start into a little bit of power work next episode. We'll see. And by the way, I wanted to mention that I did solve our power issues just for the time being. Um, be like a temporary fix. We'll have to change it later on. Um, but I just limited how much power was coming over to this. It's going to be slower. Um, but as long as I chunk load this, it's not going to matter. I'm going to drop a chunk loader over here because um, what I did was I just limited this to 4,000 transfer limit for the time being anyways because I just don't have the power to support it at full speed or even dumping all the power uh, that I have because I think the um, what we have set up over there from the reactor it's like the, uh, the MFSUs they only can move like 8,192 RF uh, per tick so yeah, I'm just going to limit that. Speed's not that big of a concern for me. I just kind of want this running passively uh, to build up some some dimensional shard ore. I guess I should have set this up um, really before I started building. But that's okay because uh, we have some other work that needs to get done for the, the ore system. And we really have to get power. Um, there's really no way around that. We're going to have to do power. Uh, so we might start into that here soon also. But anyways, I know it's about wrapping up point for this episode, so we are going to end this one out here. A little bit unexpected there at the end. I wasn't expecting to uh, have issues with power, but then again, I am only running one reactor. I could go ahead and set up the second one, and I might do that. And then if we're setting pretty good on power at that point, because it is kind of a slow drain, uh, if we're setting good at power at that point, I will probably 
not worry too much about it at the moment, even though I know we're going to have to cycle power soon. Um, but we might get a little bit more progress on our ore system first. We'll see. So anyways, um, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode and I hope you guys enjoyed the build this episode. Um, it was a lot of fun. It was a fairly big project, um, but not too bad. I mean, it was pretty much like two materials for the majority of it. Um, but this is definitely a reason to make sure if you get the world downloads in the future, you'll definitely want Cathedral. Otherwise, this building will just be a big pile of dirt <laughs> without Cathedral. Not to mention all these wires and stuff will break off. Anyways, I hope to see you guys next time. Until then, as always, do take care. Stay safe. I'll see you guys then.